Once the milk is collected, it's put into a tanker truck like this. And although it's ready for transport, quality control and safety are still a top priority. Before it ever leaves the barn, we run uh, antibiotic tests on it. And the reason we want to do that is to make sure that, that it is clean milk. We don't want any uh, antibiotics in our milk. And, and we, then we put it on the truck. And the uh, processor, before he unloads that truck, he'll also run the antibiotic test to make sure that there's uh, no uh, bad bugs in, in the milk. There's a milk truck here right now loading. And before he takes a, uh, a load of his uh, sample, he sampled probably seven samples He's looking for uh, antibiotics, he's looking for uh, bacteria, he's looking for uh, any contaminants in this milk, and so it's tested before it's ever loaded. The tanker that you might see going down the highway contains 6,000 gallons or about 50,000 pounds, and we'll produce about five truckloads a day. Well, when you see a tanker coming down the road, it probably came from a dairy that day, and will probably empty at a plant that day unless it's traveling over a great distance, within it, then it'll be within two or three days, or if that. Most areas have several tankers coming every day, every couple of hours, 24 hours a day. So there's quite a bit of them being produced. From here, the milk is headed to a processing facility where it will be packaged and ready for you at the grocery store. What's unique about our dairy is that, you know, we have a, our own cows, our own farm, and all the milk that comes into our plant is from our own, own uh, plant, which is only four miles away from the bottling plant. There's only a handful of uh, plants like ours that have their own uh, dairy and do their own bottling. Milk arrives uh, at 5.30 in the morning into the raw tanks, and from there we've got a pump that pulls it to the pasteurizer, goes through a balance tank, and uh, through the pasteurizer homogenizer. From there it's distributed to our uh, pasteurized tanks, which we've got uh, regular milk and 2% milk. Milk has to come to legal temperature of 168 degrees and uh, a cutout of 167 before it is ran to the tanks. There's a couple of steps that is being ran through to check and make sure everything's working correctly. What homogenization is, is uh, breaks the cream up from the, the milk. That way you don't have a, a cream settlement on, on top of the gallon after it's bottled. As far as the bottling, you know, uh, we have a, a gallon filler and a half gallon filler. And there's a machines for certain container with a gallon, half gallon. We have a line of different products. We have our gallons, homogenized, 2%, skim, 1%, our half gallons. Uh, we have also the homogenized, 2%, skim. We have strawberry, uh, chocolate, and buttermilk. Not only do dairy products taste good, but they help you maintain a strong and healthy body. Milk is very nutritious and should be included in a balanced diet. When you're thinking about nutrition, milk is one of the first things that comes to mind. It's a food that is just packed with nutrients that our bodies need. And if you take, you wonder how much milk should we actually be drinking a day or how much milk products should we be eating? What you're gonna do here is, I'm just gonna pour out one serving size of milk. And this is a really big measuring cup. But this is a cup right here of milk, and you'll see when you pour it into the glass. So there you've got one serving of milk. And how many servings do we need a day? Basically, we need three servings a day for those nine and older. And for children from the ages of two to eight, two cups of milk a day is appropriate. So dairy products are a wonderful source of calcium, which is really important for all of us, whether we're young or old, male or female. And sometimes we have children who don't really feel that excited about drinking milk or eating dairy products. One of the things that's really helpful is flavored milks. 
And um, flavored milks actually are sold on the market. You can get them in single serving sizes like these. You want to read the label to see how much sugar they have in them. Often they're pretty filled with sugar. And so one thing that we suggest is actually mixing a bit of flavored milk with regular non-flavored milk. The, the ch kids will still taste the sweetness, taste the chocolate or the strawberry flavor, but it won't be quite so sweet. Another great way to drink milk is in a licuado, or what we call sometimes a smoothie. There's so many different kinds of fruits that you can add to milk. Um, if you've got a blender, basically just throw in any fruit, whether it's um, room temperature or even better, frozen. And then some milk and perhaps a little bit of sugar. You don't need very much if you've got some sweet fruit in there. Just whip it up and then you've got an instant breakfast drink or something to have for your kids when they get home from school. You're getting that fruit, you're getting the milk, and you're also getting the refreshment of that cold um, liquid going down. Not only is milk great to drink, but it's used in a variety of dairy products. Cheese, sour cream, yogurt, the list goes on and on. There are many, many products made out of milk. Um, we're all familiar with cheeses, hard cheeses, and soft cheeses. And of course, we have string cheese nowadays, which are great snacks for kids, for adults. You can keep these on hand in your lunch pail or in your um, little refrigerator at work and they make a great snack um, just quickly and you get the calcium out of these as well as protein. I like having a bowl of cereal as a snack because it's fast and it's easy to clean up. And your is so simple to pack, you just grab one and go. You can take it with you to head off to class. Yeah, it's perfect. Yum! Milk goes perfect with some of our favorite foods like warm chocolate chip cookies. It's also used in everyday cooking. This evening, we're going to make macaroni and cheese, traditional style. One of the things I love about cooking with milk is that it's a great ingredient to use for making soups, for making sauces, it can be mashed potatoes, so many different uses for milk. The oven temperature is set at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to be cooking one and a half cups macaroni pasta. We're ready now to add the pasta to the boiling water. We'll go ahead and add our three uh, tablespoons of butter to our saucepan and begin to melt it. Mix up the pepper and the salt in the flour and we're ready to add it to the butter. There we go. And we'll get it mixed till it's nice and smooth and no more lumps in the butter. And we have the cheese ready here. We'll put some cheese in little bit at a time. Okay, that's getting nice and melted and now we'll add some of the milk. Have it in somewhat of a low heat. Don't want the temperature too high so that it scalds the bottom of the pan. And our cheese is getting nicely melted so we'll add a little bit more. So we'll turn the macaroni off. The pasta is ready. Okay, now we'll go ahead and drain the pasta. Now we'll go ahead and add our pasta. And we are ready to pour the mixture of cheese into a casserole dish. Just a little mixing, and then we will top it off with the remainder of the cheese. And there we go. Okay, now we're ready to put the casserole dish of the fine traditional macaroni and cheese right in the center of the oven. All right, we're ready to set the timer for 35 minutes. 
we have our finished product of our traditional macaroni and cheese. And there you go, we are ready to enjoy our traditional macaroni and cheese. What would a bowl of cereal be without milk? Because of the hardworking people of the dairy industry, it's readily available at the supermarket every day for us to enjoy. To keep a dairy up and running, it takes constant vigilance, it takes a, a people on hand at all times, and everybody is looking out so that we know that that milk coming from the dairy to your uh, table is going to be uh, the quality that we all need. Because you know what? My kids drink that milk too. It's a very family-oriented job that we can work together and that, that really is probably one of my biggest enjoyments of, of our business is being able to spend time with my family and working and, and hopefully passing on that working ability to my, my own kids. I enjoy it, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of what I grew up in, you know, it's, it's what I do. From the farm to the dairy cow to the packaging plant and the consumer, it's a process that provides a diverse, and healthy product, milk. Field Trip was made possible by the Cooperative Extension Service at New Mexico State University and by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. Mama, can you help me put it in the cup, please? Wow. If you would like to purchase a copy of this program, please visit krwg.org.